Cheers. Patrick, did you leave Supernova or did Supernova get rid of you? No, no, we just... Uh, I had a good time at Supernova, but... It was my decision that I'm not going to stay there, and, but I, I, I mean the team works really well and everything, but just I didn't get really well together and that's, that's why I changed teams and that's why I'm with Colony now. Well, it was a mutual parting of the ways and it wasn't working, so he wanted to rejoin Colony and you know, uh, basically Jeffrey Van Hooydonk didn't want to stay with Colony, so we did a swap, very civilised. I know David already, David Sears already from a few years ago and it's always been a dream for me to drive in this team and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here at the moment. I think it's a very nice and very good opportunity to step up from Formula 3 to Formula 3000. It's just going to be a very good experience for me and uh, well I can say it's, I'm very excited, looking forward to the race. I know the team from last year and we won some races and that's the important thing. And I think we're going to look good here at Magnicourt. I think for the coming two races, uh, the French Grand Prix and the English Grand Prix, it's going to be difficult, but afterwards uh, I think we will produce uh, some good results. I would say in these uh, six races left, I just want to learn as much as I can, finish each of the races, uh, do as many laps as possible, learn of the tracks, learn of the car. But for sure, any time I can do good, I can do well, I can, I'm going to push for sure. So I hope that's cleared that up for you. I can tell you it has made a difference in qualifying for today's race, and Simon Taylor can tell you even more. Well, Lee, Tonio Liotz is determined to regain his Formula 3000 Championship lead here in France, and he's qualified on pole ahead of Yannick Schroeder and Patrick Freisacker, who's starting well for Coloni. But championship leader Toccacello has not qualified well. He's back on row four with a lot of work to do. Ernesto Viso's qualified nicely on row five, but the Supernova boys are way back. Van Hoydonk 13th and Van der Merwe 15th. Well, it's all clear at the back. Liuzzi on pole in the red Arden car on the left of your picture, but the first corner is a left curve, which could favour Schroeder in the Durango car on the right. The lights are off. We're away. A perfect start from Liuzzi, who goes to the left. Schroeder goes right. And Dornbos coming through well from row two, but it's Liuzzi who's got the lead as they go down to Estoril. Schroeder in second place. Dornbos has got the jump on Freisacker. Toccacello's starting well. He's in there too. And Thomas Enger is coming through well. Now they've got this long drag down to the Adelaide hairpin, which is so important on the first lap. Liuzzi is a little bit clear of the rest. Schroeder looking good in second place, but it's very, very close behind. Dornbos third. It's four abreast behind them. And Thomas Enger going through very well indeed. Freisacker, Enger, Toccacello and Jose Maria Lopez were in there as well. Somehow they've all got through unscathed and on towards the long, long left hand of the 180. They're in it now. And Liuzzi and Schroeder looking comfortable but a tremendous battle from behind because Dortmund is being passed by Thomas Enger. Thomas Enger up to fourth and now up to third. He's gone past Dawn Boss. A brilliant move. Let's look at the start again. Liuzzi and Schroeder cleanly away. But Thomas Enger it was, the car with the white nose and the yellow wing, moving towards the middle of the road and getting the jump. And Thomas Enger is really charging now. He's already up to third place. It wasn't a jump start. It was just a perfect start when the lights went out. Liuzzi Schroeder, Enger Freisack of the top four. We've got an accident. That's Matthias Lauder's car looking badly damaged, stranding beside the track. Marshall's trying to, in fact, he's trying to drive it away as Lauda, but he's not going to go anywhere in that car at all because the two right-hand wheels are virtually hanging off it. We didn't see what happened, but clearly Lauda's car is in a difficult position, and I suspect we may well have the safety car so they can move that. Lauda walking away, looking none too pleased from his body language. We're going to see what happens. This is Lauda going round the outside of Van der Merwe, and the car just rolls completely in the air, doesn't even go on its roll bar, lands on its wheels, Lauda clearly unhurt. Van der Merwe was trying to go down the inside, Lauda rode up over his wheel, and that's what started the roll. And the safety car is out now while the marshals clear the wreckage. Everybody holding position, we'll be right back. 
Welcome back to Manny Kerr. That is Matthias Lider with his famous father, Nicky Lider. Matthias obviously unhurt, and Dad looking pretty philosophical about it. Well, the safety car has bunched all the field up. The safety car's now pulled off. The race is on again. Vitantonio Liuzzi leading. Still Yannick Schroeder in second place. Thomas Enger having come through well to third place. Ahead of Patrick Freisacker, then it's Robert Dornbos, and the current championship leader, Enrico Toccacello, is in sixth place. Liuzzi easing away now, and Freisacker threatening Thomas Enger. So Enger having passed Freisacker for third place, Freisacker right up behind him as they come now down the long drag once more to the Adelaide hairpin, and Freisacker goes inside Thomas Enger, gets a very tight line. Will Enger be able to fight back as they come out there, wheel to wheel, coming out of the Adelaide hairpin? going on through the curves that follow it, absolutely wheel to wheel, but Freisacker is there, Freisacker makes it stick. And meanwhile, let's hear about Matthias Lauder's accident, Lee's talking to him in the pits. Matthias, it looks a bit crash, are you all right? I'm fine, yeah, but I'm a little bit, a little bit angry because it was just the second lap and he tried to, 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 to pass me in a way that's nearly impossible because I was in the corner already and he went into me and I rolled. It seemed that you had the racing line. He just came into the back of you. No, there was no way he can overtake me because you can uh, break one out on the inside. But I was in the corner already and he just went into me. He, he made a big mistake and I'm quite angry, but OK, what can I do? It's over. Well, a very unhappy Matthias Lauder. Well, Alain van der Merwe, who was in the other car, did continue unscathed after the collision. He's now running in 13th place, but Freisacker is driving like a man possessed. He's dealt with Engel, he's now up to Schroeder, and he gets him at the Adelaide Hairpin. Now Schroeder tries to fight back in the blue car, and once more they're wheel to wheel, just as they were last time. Who is going to break first for the right-hander? Well, it's Schroeder who breaks first, and again, the flying Patrick Freisacker has got another place. He's moved up now to second place. Delight in the Colony pit. That is Paolo Colony talking to his driver over the radio. And obviously now this man, Vitantonio Liuzzi, who is leading the race, will be being told by his pit that Freisacker has now fought his way to the front of the pursuit. And Liuzzi is going to be under pressure from Freisacker too. But that's Freisacker in the pit. Very, very early to make a pit stop. You have to make a mandatory stop for fresh tyres. But why has Freisacker stopped so early? Now that's going to drop him way back into the traffic. And he's going to have all that work to do all over again. Liuzzi then out on his own. And back into second place, it's Yannick Schroeder. Thomas Enger is still there in third place. They've all got pit stops to come, remember. Robert Dornbos fourth ahead of championship leader Toccacello and Guerrieri. This is Can Artan, the only Turkish driver in Formula 3000, actually getting it very wrong ahead of Jeffrey Van Hoydonk. Can Artan in the second Colony car goes across the gravel and loses several places. And into the pits now, Jose Maria Lopez. Just six mechanics allowed to work on the car in these Formula 3000 pit stops, very different from a Formula 1 pit stop. One man per wheel, one on each jack, front and rear. They've got the job done, the CMS team, and Lopez back into the race once more. Toccacello is in as well, and this is looking like a rather slow stop. I don't know what they're doing on the front of the car, but they've done the back already, and that took far, far too long for Toccacello. This is not his day at all. Patrick Freisacker, after his stop, passing Van Hoydonk there, who hasn't stopped. That's an irony, because those are the two drivers who have swapped teams and effectively swapped cars. Nico Verdonk making his stop. Oh, and it's gone terribly wrong for him. The man with the front jack got out of the way, but left his jack there. An extraordinary thing to do, and that's delayed Verdonk. And here comes our leader now into the pit. This is Vitantonio Liuzzi's stop. And the Arden team under Christian Horner, usually pretty professional and pretty proficient at doing this job quickly. The front wheels are off, the back wheels are off, the new wheels are going on. And the nuts are tightened up, and away goes Vitantonio Liuzzi. A very nice, clean stop. He's lost the lead, but only to Monfadini, the man in the green car, and Viso, the man in the blue one. Those are the two that haven't stopped yet, as Thomas Enger finishes his stop. And we've got Monfadini in the pit lane now. Monfadini comes in, and we're seeing again that disastrous pit stop for Verdonk. He drove off, not his fault, because the man on the front jack had just left it there. 
Who's that off in the dust? That's Toccacello. Toccacello was running 10th after all his pit stops, well out of the points. And that mistake must surely have come from desperation, seeing his championship lead evaporate here at Manicor. He's gone way off into the dirt. That won't have done his tyres any good, but he's back on the circuit now. And Engers back up to Freisacker again for second place. In the Kalobi pit, they reckon Patrick's got a problem. Patrick uh, had an early pit stop. Uh, lost some time in overtaking uh, Van Oydong. And uh, unfortunately, he's just saying to me to the radio that since lap two, the dashboard is not working. So that is causing him a problem for the gear change. Anyway, I just said we try to finish the race in the best we can. But... It's doing a good race anyway. We hope he can finish the race in this situation. It will be brilliant for him. So, gear change problems for Freisacker and Engel really piling on the pressure. Meanwhile, Jose Maria Lopez has stopped. He was running seventh. And let's see what happens. Well, he went off in a big way. Plumes of tyre smoke coming off his back tyres. I wonder if he was in the wrong gear then. Whatever it was, the CMS car is off and out of the race. And Thomas Edgar very close now. This is the battle for second place. Edgar right in the slipstream and goes alongside. They're breaking hard as they go into the corner before the final chicane. And that's a beautiful move by Enger. Enger goes up then into second place. And Enger, having been following Freisacker for so long, has obviously worked out where his weaknesses are. He's plotted that move. What he did was went very wide into that right-hander, which meant he could take a tight exit, elbow Freisacker out of the way, and then have a straight run into the chicane. They're delighted in the mark on pit. There's our leader now, Vitantonio Liuzzi, and they'll be telling him that Enger is back into second place. And while Freisacker has been losing speed, he's now got Enger chasing him. That's Can Artam abandoning ship. So his race clearly is run. And Esteban Guerreri getting into difficulties ahead of Enger's teammate, Tony Schmidt, and actually chopping Tony Schmidt so that his front wing is damaged. Now, Freisacker has now slipped back into the clutches of Yannick Schroeder. Schroeder can see a possible podium here. And just as Enger did, he is just dogging the wheel tracks of Freisacker, who's battling with a difficult car. We know he's got gear change difficulties. And so Schroeder really feels that he should be able to get that podium today. Freisacker desperately trying to hold him off, and Schroeder's gone off. Bad mistake there by Schroeder. Rather fortunately for him, he went off as the Colony team watch. He went off where there was tarmac on the runoff area rather than gravel. And now he tries it just where Enger does. Nice is breaking far too late. He's on the outside anyway. And Freisacker knows how to cope with that. Freisacker still has the line through the chicane. Freisacker holding on to this third place as they come over the start-finish line to start another lap. Schroeder nothing like as confident in his efforts to overtake as was Thomas Enger. And there we see it again. He just went far too deep into the corner, left his braking much too late and handed the place back to Patrick Freisacker. Well, here's our leader, Vitantonio Liuzzi, still all on his own, keeping a nice cushion. And that's Bonfadini, minus his front wing, going way off the road. And his AEZ teammate, Raffaele Giamaria, retiring into the pits. We see again Bonfadini going way off the track. And as he bounces across the bumps, he loses his front wing. And this is the final chicane for Liuzzi. The checkered flag is waiting. Fit Antonio Liuzzi wins his fourth Formula 3000 victory of 2004. And that will put him back into the championship lead. Thomas Enger takes a hard-earned second place. What's going to happen for third? It's going to be Patrick Freisacker. Freisacker hangs on to that third place ahead of Yannick Schroeder, and the Cologne team are delighted. So, confirmation of the result. Liuzzi taking the race by six and a half seconds from Enger. Freisacker and Schroeder third and fourth, and the other points going to Arden's Robert Dornbos and BCN's Esteban Guerreri. And the Venezuelan Ernesto Viso finishes eighth in his first Formula 3000 race. Toccacello, a lacklustre twelfth. Four wins there for Liuzzi. He's back on top, and he goes on to Silverstone with a six-point lead over Toccacello. Antonio, congratulations. You won today's race, and you've regained control of the championship. Yeah, this is the most important thing, uh, get back the leadership of the championship. Uh, 
As it happened to me in Nürburgring, a bad day. I think today was the same for Enrico, but uh, this is the way it is. Uh, it's, uh, it was a perfect uh, weekend. Uh, the team really did a really good job. Uh, we had uh, a really good car and everything was great. The car was really brilliant in the race, thanks to the team. And uh, I was able to get from P7 on the start to P3, uh, sorry, P2 in the end of the race. So it was really fantastic. It feels great to be back in Cologne and just already in the first race a podium. I mean, the race until lap number 10, well, everything was fine, but just then sudden, suddenly it was starting, with my rear tires were going off, and then every lap was getting worse and worse, and so I was really struggling at the end of the race. When you're driving at the limit, of course, sometimes you're overdriving a bit, and uh, at the same time, uh, if he was looking in the mirror and I looking at me arriving late, or I was trying to push him and... Uh, trying to make him doing mistakes, but uh, it didn't work this time. In Silverstone, I think it's gonna should be good because I know the track, and I know the car a bit more now, so I can push a bit harder. So Tony Oliuzzi regains control of the drivers' championship before heading to Silverstone, home of his team Arden. Rejoin us in two weeks' time for more international motorsport.